I'm holding a gun, and the lynx doesn't even see me as a threat. This isn't the first time I've seen this. Predators exposed to radiation seem to have lost all fear. They're like rabid dogs. Their instinct for self-preservation has been suppressed. What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to Day Our Survival. I'm your host, the Birdman Otis Falcon. As always, if you're into the series, let me know in the comments if I'm leaving a thumbs up so we make more of this. Uh, between episodes, I was a busy boy. I spent about like, man, maybe two hours farming. And why was I farming so much? Well, leather armor, boys. We got the best armor. I mean, it's technically the best armor you can make with sewing. Um, I, I guess you could also go into the 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 knight armor or whatever, the stuff over here when, when it comes to blacksmithing. But I'm not sure if I want to take some time blacksmithing, but it's there. But at least I made the sewing one, which is all the way down here. Step on in here. Survivor base, let's talk around. If Sep Lana and her comrades had taken shelter in the apartment block, then the local survivors had built the whole camp out of crude wooden huts. Judging by the smoke, somebody even managed to build a working stove. There were only two dozen of them in total, mostly women of various ages. Let's ask the locals about Nadesta. In response to my question about Nadesta Kulik, I was directed towards the smallest shack. It looked like luck was on my side this time. One thing worried me though, why did the locals speak of Nadesta with such mournful expressions on their faces? So we can look around and talk to the locals, talk to Nadesta, or go to the bunkhouse. Let's um, well, let's go to Nadesta first and then we'll do all the fraternizing later. It was cold and dark in the tiny house. On an old mattress leaning against the wall sat a small gray-haired woman. She must be Nadesta. Another mattress lay against the opposite wall, but there was no one else there. I approached Nadesta. Uh, Nadesta, don't be afraid, I'm not gonna hurt you. The old, well, prematurely aged to be precise woman didn't startle. She looks at me distrustfully with her tired gray eyes and doesn't speak. Sorry for the intrusion, I really need your help. Can you spare me a couple of minutes? Then I'll leave you and not bother you again. Who are you? What do you want from me? I wanted to ask you something. It's about your husband. Nadesta twitched at the mention of her husband. Then she frowned and turned away from me. Leave, please. Nadesta, hear me out. It's important. The woman's lip quivered. She looked at me in fury. Important. Couldn't you pick a better time? Get out. Retreat towards the door and wait. You haven't left yet. What are you looking at me for? Leave me alone. I just want to help you. If you want to help me, then leave now. Someone close to you is missing. Who? This woman's husband's with the only threat that could lead me to the truth about the events long ago. I had to convince her to talk. Jenna, my son. What happened to him? Nadesta let out a sob and brought a handkerchief to her nose. A tense silence fell once more. Finally, Nadesta looked at me again. He went with one of his friends, Vanya, to Novo Moskovs two days ago to get food. But Vanya came back alone. He said the building collapsed, that Jenna died. Said so Genna? Jenna, or maybe it's Genna, died. Jenna sounds a bit too feminine. I didn't ask for much. I just wanted to bury my son, to look at his face one last time, you know? I asked our people to transport his body back, but they refused, said it was too dangerous. They said we have too few men as it is, only three left. And poor Ignat, there was no one who could go. I can find your son's body and bring it to you. Nadesta looks at me skeptically. You, you'll really do it. Take me to Gena. Yes, I'll bring it. Nadesta probably struggling to believe that a stranger was willing to help her when the other camp dwellers had refused all aid, but she got a grip on herself and then spoke in a whisper. Well then, come back as soon as you can and be careful. I have to bring a boy's body back to his mother. A very sad mission. It's surprising the way life plays out sometimes. You survive an epidemic, a nuclear war, five years of starvation and deprivation, and then your life implodes because of some stupid accident. Well, that happened to me. Look around and talk to the locals. Let's go to Vanya first and find out about the body. Vanya was sitting on the porch and smoking. Within his first few words, I realized that he was slightly drunk. Hey, we haven't had nobody new around here in a long time. Where, where'd you come from? What hole did you crawl out of? I'm a drifter. Vanya's eyes whistle. Oh, Vanya even. Vanya's eyes whistle. I don't even know how I got that from that, but apparently his eyes are capable of making noise. Truly, this is a mutated world of Russia, I would say. A drifter? 
I didn't think there were any idiots left who would walk around the wasteland alone. Well, there are. I want to ask you something. About Gena, right? I saw you visit his mom. But I'm not telling you anything. I've had to tell the story to everyone at least three times. I'm sick of it. Well, you have to do it one more time. Vanya laughed and tossed a cigarette into the bushes. Then he gave me a mocking look. Nasty kid. And what do you wish to know, my lord? Just tell me what building you left him in. A five-story apartment building next to some garages. In an apartment on the third floor. What's it to you? I want to bring Gana's body back to give him a decent burial. Vanya chuckled again. So what? You're seriously going to go all the way to Novomos for a corpse? The young man went quiet and then gave me an intriguing look. Listen, Drifter. I've got an idea. Let's go to my place. I brought some liquor from Novosko. The label says Brianskaya. Have you heard of that brand? Only trouble is, I've got nobody to drink it with. There are only women here. What, you want to get drunk with some girlies? Man, I'm just saying, have a good time. It's the post-apocalypse. Thanks some other time. You know, I don't really feel like drinking with you. I don't really feel like drinking with you. What? And you call yourself a Russian? Well, he's got a point. Let's look around and talk to the locals, see what we can do about this blacksmithing business here. Go to Ignat. My attention was drawn to a pale middle-aged man sitting on a wooden stool. He was, looking laund he was doing laundry in the tin basin in front of him. Suddenly he gave a loud barking cough, then brought a rough gray rag to his lips. He became aware of my gaze and his cheeks reddened. What are you gawking at? Get lost. I was wondering, maybe you need help with something. I don't. I've got the whole camp full of helpers here. They bring me pills, they bring me bowls of hot water to steam my lungs, and when the time comes, they'll cry over me and put me in the ground. The last thing I need is another minder. You're planning to die. Maybe I am. Maybe I ain't. It's none of your business. Where did you even come from? Which camp did you blow in from? No camp, I'm a drifter. A bandit, then. Nobody else survives in the wasteland. Hey, a bandit. You got a smoke on you. Should you really be smoking considering, um, you know, your lungs aren't doing that good right now? With that cough, a cigarette is the last thing, yeah. One dragon, you'll be dead. Ignat suddenly gets up and walks towards me. He comes up close and spits on the floor at his feet, barely missing my shoes. And what if I do need it? Ignat's face went gray. Breathing heavily, he dropped his head and winced. He went back to his stool and sat looking at the floor. A minute later, he looked up at me almost pleadingly. Hey man, come here. What do you need? I'm going to die real soon. Here they just fuss over me, feeding me, dosing me. And I'm like a parasite, just sitting here doing nothing. They did me a big favor today. They let me wash my own rags. They tell me I shouldn't stray myself when I'm sick. Man, I was a shock worker. The first person in that metalworks to earn the title. And then everything went to crap. The epidemic took my sons. Then the bombs fell. I thought it was all behind me, but no. Now my lungs don't, don't work. My wife is my nurse. She'd spoon me if I let her. Spoon feed me. If she wants to spoon you, that's fine, but spoon feed me if I let her. But I'm not an old man. I'm not even 40. So you're a foundry man. Foundry man, fitter, I was even a welder at one point. I've worked with iron all my life. I've got an idea. I'll help you. I'll build you a forge. You know, like you see in villages. With an anvil or furnace bellows, you'll be able to continue working with metal. In exchange, you'll teach me. Ignat's eyes light up for a second, but then he drops his head again. I don't know, man. It's been too many years, and I've never forget. And I've never worked in a country forge. I watch my grandpa forging stuff. I won't be able to do it. You'll do it. What have you got to lose? If it doesn't work out, you can just go back to your stool and keep clutching at your wife's skirts and begging cigarettes off of bandits. I'm going to be a blacksmith, like Gramps. All right, man, it's a deal. We'll build a forge and I'll teach you what I can remember. And I guess we'll hit the road now. Yeah, we just go down straight up, right? Are we good to go? Yeah, we're... My dude looks like such a baller with this outfit, though. Look at this dude. Okay, so... Intact building. Let's just come in here right now. And it is going to be right over there. And I guess what we're at, you know what I should have done? I should have probably unloaded myself back over there so I could bring back some of those materials needed for the, the forge. Like, just scavenge a couple of them here. So that's going to be where it's at. For now, let's come over here really quickly. Bricks and then fire bricks are also needed, right? And also 10 pipes is what he said. Quest, let's see here. Yeah, so 10 pipes and... Uh, Scrap's fairly easy to come by, especially in the construction sites. 400 bricks. Now, that's going to be a problem just because of the weight. 
Because each one of them is like two kilograms, right? Oof. Well, let's do a small little search over here. I mean, you find them very easily. That's the upside. Oh, and that's it. Hmm. Wow. Wow. Okay. So, um, I'm curious here. That's going to take a, a lot of bringing back. Are you kidding me? Ooh, boy. 237. How many can I bring back with me? Wow, not even 42 or 52. <laughs> Look at that. I can bring back 19 with me. Oh, my God. So if I want to make this happen, we have to, like, literally unload just about everything nearby and just go out there and do naked runs for bricks, huh? Okay. We have a garage. We gotta go through there because we have a chance of hopefully finding... Oh, no rubber parts, oddly enough. I have a ton of rubber parts stored up because whenever I have to make another vehicle somewhere, I know I'm gonna need those parts, and... I'm already up to, like, 20 or something, which is pretty good. Um, I need you. We have ourselves the old ad as per usual. You guys know how it is? Let me come on in here and see what type of... Hopefully we get a really silly one. I'm crossing my fingers. Alright, another boring one. Rise of Civilizations. Just gameplay. No silly music. No silly player. Nobody acting up a storm for the camera. And we got a saucepan for it. Was that great? Not really. I already got like four of these, but thanks, I guess. Cool. All right, let's take you, and that's really about it from here. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Anything else around here? Well, we have the school. I mean, we might as well check these areas before I go straight up into the questing. This will only be for gas, which it's nice to know that there's gas here. As a matter of fact, let's mark it because people have been very adamant about Falcon. You will need gas sooner or later, so make sure you know where gas is left over. Marking a gas station would be a very good thing to do. Eh, I'm kind of good on that stuff. Kind of good on that. Any books? Looking for books, just so I can learn stuff quickly. Let's see about this body here, huh? And you're asking me to come inside, so we should do is save. Because... There's a possibility for fail. Don't want anything to do with that. A mother's request. If the survivor dies during the test quest, the quest will restart. We need a shovel, crowbar, Makarov gun. So everything you asked for, I do have. Perfect. I made my way through the dusty entrance and up the stairs. On the third floor landing, I encountered a pile of concrete rubble. that almost reached the ceiling. A lone piece of steel piping was sticking out of the pile and the corridor beyond was blocked by a crack flooring slab from a floor higher up a large hole gaped in ceiling a large hole gaped in ceiling above me i shone my flashlight up and couldn't make out the cracked ceiling of what must have been the fifth floor similar cracks sneaked along the plaster on the third floor the rubble was more imposing than i expected it was going to take me several hours to clear a path using a crowbar or shovel and that was being optimistic. I surveyed the crack walls distrustfully. The load-bearing wall behind the rubble was missing. I'll have to work very carefully if I don't want the building caving in on my head. Over three hours passed before I managed to get past the barrier. The muscles in my arms would ache in fatigue. I'm in a hallway with broken concrete piled up half a meter high. There are three apartments here. One of the doors is open. Maybe Geno is here. Maybe he still is. I found Gena's body in the kitchen. Poor kid. Chunks from the walls and ceilings were piled on his torso. I listened and heard a low whistling sound. He was breathing. The kid was still alive. Stop it. I needed to get him out of the rubble and look him over as soon as possible. I sat the flashlight down and started lifting rubble off his body. But not even a minute had passed when a muffled rustling came from the corridor. And a link scurried into the kitchen. The noise must have drawn his attention when I was clearing the blockage in the stairwell. The links had definitely been exposed to radiation. It was unnaturally large and had green swellings on the bald spots of its body. Withdraw your gun. The links looked at me appraisingly, then it turned towards Ganna and dropped closer to the ground. I'm holding a gun and the links doesn't even see me as a threat. This isn't the first time I've seen this. Predators exposed to radiation seem to have lost all fear. They're like rabid dogs. Their instinct for self-preservation has been suppressed. Now their primary instinct is hunger. We could shoot them, or we could wait. I mean... 
It's going towards Genna. I'm gonna shoot the Lynx. We gotta fight him. No surprise there. I'm a little bit salty that I didn't put my leather armor before going in here. But that being said, he's only 100 HP, he's got no armor, so this should be a fairly easy fight for us. Oh yeah, I also made a bunch of these, um... What are you, Molotovs, I guess? I made a bunch of Molotovs, I had a ton of, like, soap. So I used a lot of soap to make the leather outfit. But I had a lot of leftovers, so I was like, yeah, I might as well make a couple of these bombs and then preserve the grenades going forward, so... It's, it's really good because it only costs, like, one turn point to use it, so... Okay, um, let's move, let's have him come towards us, I'm gonna say. And then we could probably just kapow his ass soon. What's really good about the ghillie, it gives you a chance to dodge attacks more often. And I've been noticing that a lot, especially when I was doing my hunting off camera for the leather armor parts. Oh! That shotgun party, baby! Just one kapow to the face! When the lynx was dead, I dragged the heavy carcass into a corner and got back to work. Gennett was mumbling something and weakly pushing away at the air with his hand. I shoved the largest piece aside and saw a sledgehammer. Strange. I got Gena out and gently carried him into the room and laid him on a small couch. Looked the kid over. His left leg was only badly bruised, but his right shin bone was definitely broken. Gena wouldn't be walking out for the next few wouldn't be walking for the next few months. He was a good-looking kid. He had an intelligent face, freckles, and he was really young. No more than 16. I fashioned a splint for his leg. Gena's eyes opened slightly. Thirsty. Give the sick kid water and food. Gena perked up a little after drinking some water. He even tried to eat something. Lie down and don't move, I told him. You're awfully energetic for somebody who's been trapped under rubble for a day. Your right leg tells a different story, though. And you probably swallowed some radioactive dust. That sucks. Jenna sighed. Will I be able to walk? Right now? No way. And the future? Besides, you have to. Besides, you have to. Who will look after your mother if not you? She sent you? She didn't send me. She asked me. Are you going to bring me to her? Don't you want to rest a little first? No, I'm sick of laying around. Bring Gana to the Tula camp. How are you feeling? I asked when we were out of the city. Gana didn't answer me. He was lost in his own thoughts, unpleasant ones, judging him by his grimace. I sighed. You should be thrilled to be alive and thanking your lucky stars. You had every chance of dying back there. Is that bastard already back at camp? Who are you talking about? Vanya? He came back. Why are you calling him a jerk? He called him a bastard, actually. Because this is all his fault. His fault? Care to share a little more detail? Gena grimaced. Alright. In that apartment, we found a crate full of booze. Vanya said we should celebrate. What was I supposed to do? My mom doesn't let me drink. He refused. Jenna looked at me like I was crazy. Of course not. And she won't find out. So we drank, we hung out. Then we started looking at the other apartments in the building. They were all locked. Then Vanya remembered that the kitchen wall in the first apartment was all cracked. He said we could make a hole and crawl through into the apartment next door. He took a sledgehammer from the storeroom and started hitting the wall. Uh, okay. You couldn't come up with anything better than that? Again, it continued. The wall held, but the ceiling started crumbling. I yelled at Vanya to stop, but he just kept hitting the wall over and over like a psycho. I tried to take the sledgehammer, but he punched me. And he kept battering the wall. Gena squirmed. So the ceiling caved in. I was on the floor in agony. Couldn't see anything. Couldn't breathe through the dust. When I recovered a little, I noticed that Vanya was gone. Along with our backpacks. And then there was a crashing noise on the stairs. The whole building was shaking. I thought I was done for. So that's what happened. What do you have to say to that? The way I see it, you're both at fault. You shouldn't be drinking during an expedition. Well, we kind of do that all the time now, don't we? If you'd been sober, breaking through the wall wouldn't have seemed like such a bright idea. And what's Vanya's crime? He thought you were a goner. Anybody in his place could have done the same. He got out of there while he could. Vanya shouldn't have abandoned you. He acted like the worst kind of jerk. Well, especially for kids, I would say it's the first one. I mean, all of them kind of have their upside. Okay, like, Vanya was kind of at blame because... He's the reason why the cave-in happened. It's, but it's not like he was trying to kill the dude, right? And if it caved in, what is he going to do? Stay there the entire time and be like, well, I got to stay here? No, you're going to continue going. But at the same time, you'd imagine you want to have a little bit of sympathy towards your fellow humans, where it's kind of like, oh, let's see if I can get him out and not just book it, right? So yeah, all of them have their ups and downs, but 
Let's go with the first one. None of you guys should have been drinking to begin with, especially these are kids. What? What the hell are you saying? Gina clenched his fist. You're defending him? You don't get it. This bastard left me to die. He didn't even check on me. Yeah, I, I went over that. I went over that, my friend. I, the, the viewers know I went over that just now. And it was his idea in the first place to break through the wall. I told him it would end badly. Now, you're right about that. You did say it was a bad idea. Finding no endorsement from me, Gina turned away and was silent. We entered the patch of fog. It became harder to make our way across the rough terrain. So the conversation was dropped. So was that the wrong choice? Do I just have to agree with Jenna? Gena, whatever. Jenna, Gena, whatever. Alrighty. Well, maybe, let's see. When Gena saw the lights of the camp in the distance, he suddenly asked to stop. What is it, I asked. I thought you wanted to go home. Home will still be waiting for me after I've done this. Do me a favor. Turn off into the grove and go along the path. There'll be a meadow after about 100 meters. What are you planning? I'll tell you when we get there. Come on. You don't mind, do you? Intrigued, I didn't argue. Five minutes later, we emerged in a small meadow covered with fine dry grass. There was a pile of embers at the edge of the meadow next to a fallen pine. We're here. Now tell me straight, what are we doing here? Help me get out. Get out? Feel like going for a stroll all of a sudden? I've got a better idea. I'll take you to your mother, and after that you can walk around all you want. No, you don't understand. When they see me in the camp, it will be too late. I frowned. What will be too late? Gina thought for a while and then gruffly asked me, Can I borrow a gun? I scoffed. A gun? What do you need a gun for? You can either tell me what you have planned, or I'm taking to the desk. You either tell me what you have planned, or I'm taking you to the desk right now and you can work out the rest on your own. You have to help me. What is this kid even trying to get at here? Like, he's got a broken shin, apparently. Oh, hey, you know, I could go back home, but take me to this meadow. Okay, you're at the meadow. Oh, hey, you know, help me get out. What are you talking about? Oh, hey, uh, let me borrow a gun. It's like, uh, 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 just, just spit it out, dog. I don't owe you anything. That's it. I'm done. We're going back to the camp. I'm gonna grab my arm. Fine, fine, I'll tell you. The thing is, there's somebody I want to talk to. Right here. Without any witnesses. And with who? With Vanya. Vanya's not here. Vanya's at the camp. This is where I need you to help me. You have to go back to the camp and bring Vanya here. Tell him whatever you need to. And when he's here, we'll talk. Without witnesses. Oh, you're, you're out for revenge is what you are. Okay, we'll just say that from the start. I could understand revenge. Not this cat and mouse game we were playing. You know what? I'm not your errand boy. Deal with this Vanya on your own. We're gonna we're going to the camp. End of story. Okay. So we either have a chance of being accessories to murder. That's what we're doing. If we help this kid out, we are being an accessory to murder right now. Or just denied. Alright, let's say I'm willing to help. How would you know, is that really the what you want to do though? Like this is a town that is very short on manpower. If you kill Vanya, that's one less person out there scavenging for this group of people. You know what, in the long term, I'm thinking, no. I understand he's mad, but no. You're screwing yourselves and your town and your village going forward. I'm not gonna do it. Hey, that bastard left me to die and now I'm supposed to go to camp and talk to him like it never happened? You don't have to talk to him, but it's no concern of mine either way. I promise your mother that I would bring you back. And you will! An hour earlier or later, it makes no difference. And can I ask, what do you plan to do after you have this chat? I looked the kid straight in the eye. Gena didn't reply. Anyway, we wasted enough time, we're going back. I'll help. I'm not gonna help. No. Then I'm not going anywhere. I'm staying here, Gena announced. Really? And how are you gonna ensure that? You can't even walk. Gena's cheeks reddened. So, I'm not going to let you take me there. My patience snapped. I got out of my gun. Now listen carefully. Everybody in the camp thinks you're dead. So I could blow your brains out right now if I wanted and bring them your corpse and nobody would say a word about it. Are we clear? Well, actually, if he has a gunshot wound to the head, I'm pretty sure then they'd realize he did not die because of a building. He died because somebody shot him. Let's be honest here. Not really the best idea. 
Genna looked at, looked, looked askance at the gun. Is that an actual word? Man, this game over here just taught me a new word, if that's really a word. Gen Genna looked askance at the gun, then looked at me again. Are you serious? Absolutely. Just because I got you out doesn't mean that I'm some do-gooder who goes around helping everybody. That's not me. Your mother promised to give me information I need in exchange for you. Genna thought about what I said, and then suddenly declared, You're an a-hole. Too bad, I couldn't care less what you think of me. Genna soaked the rest of the way to the camp, and every so often cast a glowering looks my way. Clearly, I was now on his list of mortal enemies, along with Vanya. The camp's inhabitants saw Genna and abandoned their chores, rushing forward to embrace him in mass. I stood aside to wait. Genna returned the hugs of his campmates, but his eyes were grim. Let's get him to the house. Nadesta was standing in the doorway to her house. I could tell by her face that she couldn't believe her son had survived. Only when I had laid Gena on the mattress did she fall upon his chest sobbing. Mom, don't cry, it's okay, Gena begged, trying to console Nadesta, but she just cried harder. Gena looked at me and made a helpless gesture. I nodded and left quietly closing the door behind me. Looks like I'll have to wait a little longer. As I was standing there, a group of women flocked around me and started loudly thanking me for saving the boy. When they finished, they demanded that I tell them the story of Gena's rescue, down to the latest, down to the last detail. And that's when I looked over their heads and saw Vanya. He peered in through the window of Nadesta's house, then headed decisively for the door. Are you sure you should go in there right now? I called to him. Of course I'm sure, he replied. But we're still friends, I want to see him. And Vanya disappeared behind the closed door. Follow him into the house or stay outside? Let's follow. After disentangling myself from the throng of women, I went into Gena's house. I saw Nadesta in front of an open chest. She was looking for something in a box of medicines. Gena was lying on the mattress. Vanya crouched down beside the mattress, and they were conversing in whispers. When they saw me, they both fell silent. Vanya stood up, dusted himself down, and went out the door, almost bumping with his shoulder as he passed. Did you talk? I asked Gena quietly. We talked, he replied coolly. And? It's none of your business. He turned away and closed his eyes. Look, I'm thinking I'm doing the, the best thing here for the long term. If this kid hates me, I don't really care. I'm not going to be here too long. I just need some information. But at least I'm helping this camp survive by not taking another one of their extra workers that goes out to scavenge for them. Oh, I'm sorry. Forgive me, please. I still haven't thanked you. Nadesta put her hands on her head. When I saw my boy alive, all sense just left me. Don't worry. I said with a smile. I understand. You thought he was? Yes, I thought it. We all thought it, but... Nadesta brought a handkerchief to her nose. But when you went to get him in Novoskov, for a second I dared to imagine you bringing him home alive. Just for a second. And when I actually saw him alive, I... Thank you. Thank you. Luckily, I found him quickly. It could have been too late. If I'd been a few hours later, I'd think he would have died of dehydration. Gena's had a rough time. Let's leave him to sleep in peace, Nadesta said. You want me to give you some information, I recall. Ask me your questions, go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to find out what happened to your husband. What happened to Andre? Nadesta's expression shifted. What is it you want to know? Nadesta, you see, I'm trying to find out the truth about what happened back then. The epidemic, the nuclear war. I don't understand what you mean. How could Andre be involved in that? He died long before the epidemic broke out. Dead? He was executed by firing squad. Nadesta closed her eyes. It was obvious that the memory still caused her great pain. They charged him with treason, found him guilty, and they killed him. Can you tell me more about it? I'm afraid I can't. I don't know any more details. It was all classified. The investigation, the trial. I wasn't even allowed to see Andre. I know he was arrested at the institute where he worked. I received a letter from the investigator. It said that Andre had been arrested. He was charged with collaboration with the US. And that the trial was in a week's time. It was a closed hearing. The investigative committee wouldn't even allow family members to be present. I traveled to Moscow. I tried to get in to see the investigator, but he refused to speak to me. He just said that the case was cut and dried, and that there were witnesses, evidence. Your husband, he said, cut a deal with the West. He handed over important information. At first I didn't believe it, but... Andre had changed recently. He stopped coming home on the weekends. He never talked about his work. And he never picked up the phone if I called him in the evening. You know anything more? No, that's it. You know, there was something else I didn't want to know. 
I was like a bolt from the blue. My Andre, a traitor to the motherland. I couldn't get over it, but my only concern was that Gena never find out. You don't happen to have anything written by your husband, notebooks, diaries. We had nothing like that at home, but his home, but his room in Moscow. I don't know. The KGB turned the apartment upside down and took everything they could. And after, I heard that when Moscow was bombed, a fire broke out and the whole, fi the whole district burned. Fair enough. Nadesta was waiting for the next question, but I just stood there, stunned. I certainly had learned something new, but what now? Where should I go? And what should I look for? Even if something in the apartment had been had been missed by the KGB, it wouldn't have been lost in a fire that followed. Was I going to have to go back and search the Institute of Virology again? Nadeska, you don't happen to remember the investigator's last name, do you? The investigator's third name? No, I'm sorry, I don't remember. Then maybe you know something about your husband's colleagues. Well, I know who Georgi Nesterov, he was basically the head of their lab, a good man. He invited us to his house for tea when I went to Moscow to visit Andre. I saw Shashkov a couple of times too. And the Shashkov, what do you know about him? I know his first name, Leonid. He and Andre were old friends from school, but he never visited our home. I saw him at Andre's birthday party, and that's and then went to his home once. Well, it wasn't his, it was his sister's, Larissa. And do you remember where Shashkov's sisters lived? In Oriol. It was a new housing development. I'll give you the address. I don't even know why I remember it. Well, thanks. I suppose I have to go to Oriol now. And we got a battery flashlight. Safe travels, then. Thank you for helping an old woman. Gena is the only good thing I have left in his life, and you brought him back to me, even though I never thought I'd see my son alive again. You're a good man, and I believe that everything is going to work out for you. Thank you for your kind words and your help. Oh, wait, I have something for you. Here, take it. It's worth nothing compared to my son's life, but I hope you'll find it useful. Oh my god, 25,000? Well, it's, it's a lot, sure, but I mean, you do run into that eventually as well. Blacksmithing? Um, oh, that's back to my quest. Yeah, yeah, I know about the blacksmithing. So, where are we going now? Ooh. Can't see it right now, but it's probably a town over there. Okay, so we're gonna be going down over there, which is- Oh yeah, it's gonna be Oreo, we just talked about that. Well, I'm actually surprisingly not overweight considering the amount of stuff, or at least few I just picked up right now. And I also got this weird flashlight. Now, how good is that in comparison to what we have? Because I have this over here, which is amazing. It doesn't require batteries, I just have to wind it up and it's good to go. You search 250 speed? Well, there it is. I guess we are out of time, however, so if there was different options with what we just did right now, let me know. Like, what happens if I help in the killing of Vanya? Stuff like that. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I will catch you next time.